What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of World Pro Ski Tour Race Breaks. We're sitting down with A-Town Army OG and Bozeman, Montana local, Mark Taché. What's up, Mark? <laughs> Aloha, Kobe. <laughs> How are you doing? Where are you at right now? I'm, I'm back in A-Town, back in Aspen for a visit, uh, see family. Uh, my mom's 91, so try to get back here uh, at, least, uh, at least monthly to check in. Cool, cool. Let's get right into it. I wanted to ask you, you've been successful on and off the hill. You negotiated your own sponsorships as an athlete. You become a successful restaurateur. Do you have any tips for the young athletes out there on how to develop their athletic and business skills? Well, I, I think uh, you always have to keep your mind open, stay open to everything. And, and I think the hardest thing as an athlete is you're so self-absorbed in your own little world that you can get a little too uh, one-pointed. And, and I think it's important to, to take those times, whether you're in Europe or wherever you are, and, and have conversations with people. I think you develop something that, that will serve you for the rest of your life. And, and that seems to be, that was one skill, certainly for me, I think that, that helped me in, in my career. I was never afraid to have a conversation. I was never afraid to ask a stupid question. And uh, it just has, for me, it attracted, I've had have mentors in my life, uh, definitely in the restaurant business, because I knew nothing that have helped me along the way. And uh, I think that's probably one of the essential factors that, that will help you in any, any part of life. It sounds like um, almost bringing a sense of humility to the table and, and opening yourself up to opportunities and conversations. And, and yeah, you might feel stupid at times, but it, you, you're also going to learn something along the way. Absolutely. I mean, that, from, 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 you know, when, before I turned pro, I, I looked to the guys, my, the generation before, the Terry Tyler Palmers, Hank Cash, to all those guys helped me transition over. I mean, I, I switched. I, uh, after the World Championships in 85 in Bormio, uh, I kind of, that was it for me. And the next weekend, I, I raced the Nationals, was second in the slalom. And the following week after that, I was in the pro, pro tour, earning my first paycheck. So it was boom, boom, boom. And uh, Terry Palmer was the was my coach on the World Cup at that time and at the World Championships. I I just said, man, I got I got I'm done with this World Cup stuff. I need to go out on my own. And and I, I so uh, admired those guys. And they coached me at a, when I was 15 at a camp. And I I just knew, man, that was going to be the next chapter for me, pro skiing. And so they really helped shape that. But it was it was. You got to ask that question. You got to, like you said, open yourself up and say, come on, gobble up any kind of information that's going to help that transition a little, uh, make it a little easier and, and, and hopefully help you be a little more successful. Right. And, and as athletes, we put ourselves in uncomfortable positions when we push the limits. And so taking that off the hill as well and putting ourselves in those uncomfortable positions um, will open doors like they have for you too. Um, that's, that's, that's great advice. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't come easy. I think athletes also have a way of going, hey, I got this dialed. But a lot of that doesn't translate into the next chapter of life, right? right. You got to go, hey, all right, I'm brand new. I, I don't know anything here. And be, be uh, you know, beginner mind and not be afraid to ask the dumbest questions. But I think once you do that and once you expose yourself, people want to help. So a lot of successful athletes they find a zone, they figure out how to perform their best. Is there a Mark Taché zone or, or how did you perform the best when you were on the hill? I, I needed to, to, to really stay in the moment. And, and I had some, some good uh, uh, psychological advice that would help me go, you know, you don't have, you have no control of the past or the future. You only have control of what you're doing right now. And, and I remember in, in one of my best World Cups, I was seventh in, in, in Vail and at, I, I just about started to slide into the start for the second run, and I was so wound up. I kind of spack, and I kind of looked around, took a big, deep breath, and said, easy here. You know, you just got to let this happen, right? And, man, it was – I kind of carried that in, in the, certainly the rest of my career. It was just, just let it flow. I mean, there, there are so many things out of your control, and understanding the little things that you do have control of and just appreciating them and being in the moment, um, it definitely allows you – I mean, as an athlete myself, I, I had the same type of mindset. Just be present right here 
and you've trained hard, you've gotten yourself to this moment and just let go and just let yourself be here and be present. And that's when you can perform the best. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> the, the first half of your career was on the, the World Cup and then you transitioned over to the World Pro Ski Tour. Um, what was that transition like? And also what was life like once you became pro and you were um, on the World Pro Ski Tour? Oh, it was like, uh, it's so refreshing. You know, World Cup was great. Did that, you know, race amateur for eight years, but you're in a, t a team environment. So, so, and, and you got, you got to adhere to, to, it, it may not fit you, but you have to adhere to what the, the, the plan is for the whole team. And it was really important. I learned a tremendous amount, loved a lot of it, but boy, it was time for me to turn pro. I was 25. I need to be my own guy and live and die by my own rules. And I stumbled in the pro tour, you know, you stay up a little late, maybe one night and you suck the next day and you knew you learn from that and go next time. I'm not going to do that, you yeah. know? And, yeah. and I love that. I love being able to go, okay, at the end of each year, what did I, what did I do? Well, what did I suck at devise a good game plan for the summer and roll into the next year with a, a, a game plan and do that year after year. And it's really the same model I use in business is, is assess what you did well, what you didn't do well, make those adjustments and enroll next season. But for me, the pro skiing was, was a freedom of whether it was, you know, negotiating your own contracts. I mean, it was, it was like it, you had this wide open menu to, to do what you wanted to do. And I, and I love that. I mean, I love, of course, the skiing and the, and the training I liked, but I also like the ability to, with sponsors to go and, and, and explore some other opportunities and that, that also develop the business uh, skills for me later uh, that transitioned into owning my own business. Yeah. It's fun to hear you talk about um, you're, you're naturally blending um, being a restaurateur with skiing, how you were talking about uh, a menu of sponsors and pulling from here and pulling from there. It's like you're a chef creating a ski career while building restaurants. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> no, it's fun. And also, so I also managed my, my, my two nephews, uh, my sister's uh, right. sons who were pro, pro surfers. And I did that for 14 years. Uh, we signed their own first contract at, when they were 14 years old. They were freaks of nature. But my sister and her husband called and they, they, they are, lived in a one room shack in Honolulu, a block from the beach, right? And the, and the sponsors were calling them up and and they just said, hey, can you help me out? And I just retired and I'd done that. And I said, absolutely. So it was really fun. We created a team and, and uh, it was fun to work with, with the guys and, and try to help them uh, develop not only in, in their amateur, but you know, they had you know, just a high school education like I did. And I said, guys, here's how it's gonna roll, Pro Tour. You can rock and roll and have the best time and have nothing at the end, or you can kind of sock some cash away and do something with it later because you don't have a college education. This is your education. Right. And uh, that was really fun to be able to kind of mentor and give back to them along, you know, in their careers. That's cool. And there's, I mean, there's a lot of similarity in skiing and, and well, skiing on the pro tour and being a surfer. There's no team aspect anymore. It's all, um, you know, you live and die by your own discipline and what you're willing to put into it and having your mentorship after being on the U.S. ski team for eight years and then being a pro skier, I, I mean, I can only imagine how much insight and, and information you gave your nephews. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. No, it was really, really gratifying to be able to – they were probably – for me, they were the first uh, that I was able to mentor someone. You know, I was still kind of growing in my business, but I'd been retired athlete and could give back that part of my life to, to them and and um, – and, yeah, that was that was that was really a, a special part of in in, in the career and, and learning. That was another thing that I learned in my pro career and, and what what skiing and ski racing gave to me. I, I, I believe strongly in a full circle. You got to give back. You know, everything you gave, if you have those opportunities to give back, it's 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 important. Well, we appreciate you continuing to give back to the World Pro Ski Tour, both um, here on Race Breaks and also on the board of the Bobby Addy Foundation. So, Mark. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking with you and I'm excited to have you and Otto duke it out <laughs> on the three, two, one trivia next week. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Colby. Enjoyed it.